had some thoughts to share. Culture is the thing which teaches us who we are and how to behave. It teaches us what foods are good to eat. It teaches us how to interact with each other. I'm knitting. It teaches us how to party, how not to party. Culture is identity, place, and tradition. When we think of culture, we think of um, special costumes, how to dress. We think of special foods, what to eat. We think of traditions and, and habits of, of celebration, which is how to party, how to get along. And it teaches us the rules of what we're not allowed to do to each other, to each other you know. Don't, uh, don't, rip a, don't rip off a Muslim woman's scarf to see what she looks like underneath, for example. Um, not all cultures teach, teach the best way of being, but most of the time, if you think of the word culture, you're thinking of something that evolved over centuries, over many generations. And so, in theory, culture and tradition is a healthy way to teach your children. But today, we don't have culture. I know as a Canadian, we often talk about that. We're like, you know, what's my Canadian identity? What's my culture? And um, actually, I can't say I've ever seen anybody ask that question off of the television. The television often asks us and then likes to present us with catchphrases and um, choice foods. Not much else, because we don't have culture anymore. Uh, well, they talk about the consumer culture, the capitalist culture, and the corporate culture. And this is bringing me to my point. Our culture is our media. No longer do our elders teach us who to be, how to be, what to be, what to eat, what to, what to, what to wear, and when to party. And we wouldn't listen to them if we did, if they did. I recall that the first snot-nosed brats showed up on advertising. It was some time before they started to show up in shows, it was quite a long time. But they began with advertising, where I think Nerf was one of the, one of the first, I'm not sure. I, I don't mean to name and shame anyway. Just in general, I started noticing that ads, oh, and, and in sitcoms, cheap sitcoms. So the corporate world started out pretty cheap buying ads and sitcoms in which to present young people not respecting their elders. And they did this in such droves. I mean, that's why they bought the cheap stuff. They, they weren't doing it in the movies yet. Movies still showed a traditional family hierarchy where the children were respectful of their parents. But on the television, it was changing. And it wasn't just children, it was also the youth in general. It was youthful rebellion all over the silver screens, or the, the CRT screens. And it was showing up in magazines, and it was showing up, you know, it was starting to show up in print as well. Well, <coughs> this then broke the chain of culture. Um, that was about the time that they started acting like people who retained their old world, world culture were somehow less a member of society. You know, they're, they're not real, they're not real citizens, you know, Americans or Canadians, because they don't, you know, they haven't learned to speak the language. And, you know, when in Rome, and, and there was a million different little phrases to shame people who did not immediately... Americanized themselves, and it was mostly happening in America, but as a Canadian, um, I was getting a lot of the blow-by. It was inevitable, because we had, and, that, and there was an interesting dichotomy in the media for me as a Canadian, in that on Canadian productions, we still had the original values, the values of respect for your elders, you know, the little house on the prairies kind of thing, but on the American media, more and more of party animals was showing up. And they, they teach the young that satisfaction can be found with drinking and dancing sexy, which, let's face it, inevitably leads to pregnancy. And if you want to trap somebody in a system, there's nothing better 
and making them parents. Um, a lot of instinct comes to bear and they are helpless. They have to look after their kid. They cannot choose otherwise and they would not choose otherwise. And now that they have to look after their kid, that's all they really think about anymore. Now, not all parents become utterly obsessed with baby's first tooth to the degree that they start using disposable everything and buy a coffee pod machine and and you know not all people who don't have babies manage to escape these things but I think it's fair to say that you're less likely to be idealist about society to do what it takes to change society to rebel if you're busy raising children I really think that's a reasonable assumption. So, the media has been trying, in my estimation, to weaken and enslave the wage earners of North America. Now, I'm talking about I'm talking about the pencil paper I'm talking about everybody who cannot be dispensed with via robots. And in fact, it's not your work it's really valuable, actually. It's your failure to have the energy to stand up and say no. It's your failure to have the networking to stand up and say no. Because now you're, you're trapped in this corporate culture. You're not really capable of saying no, of saying, you can't do me this way. You've got kids to feed, got mouths to feed, you've got a mortgage to pay. They, they, they trap you up. And then you don't have the time or the energy to stop them from raping the earth. And they're raping the earth. They're destroying whole countries to feed their ginormous maws and then passing the blame on to you by saying it's your fault because you wear plastic pants. Because you wrap your food in saran wrap. It's your fault. But there's somebody out there who's making money off of every piece of that transaction. They are the ones that are teaching you only how to wrap your food in saran wrap. Your elders could teach you how to wrap it in wax paper and in butcher paper. They did it. But you don't listen to your elders anymore. Because in order for you to get that knowledge from them, you have to put up with everything else. You have to put up with them. Um... We don't put up with each other anymore. We don't put up with our peers. We don't put up with our elders. We don't put up with anybody. Why? Because we've got this billions, billions, and billions of people on the Internet to tell us we don't have to. And to provide us with those ego strokes. What am I doing? I've forgotten how to knit. <laughs> I'm concentrating too much on this image of the world as corporate culture wants it to be. Media is your culture and you're not taking any control over it and you're not winning. You're losing. I have demonetized my all of my videos. All of them. I've done this to reduce the number of ads that run on them. In the first place, I don't have enough views to be earning money anyway. But in the second place, if they're going to, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure by now if you watch any vlogs on YouTube, you've heard about the adpocalypse where um, YouTube's newest algorithm for determining what shall and shall not pay out to the to the maker. Uh, basically, if, if what you make does not fit within a list of qualities then it will not be it will be demonetized you will not be allowed to collect ad revenue they'll still run the ads but you won't get the money for it what this does is um, help them carefully pick and select those youtubers who are against the corporate agenda which is termed advertiser friendly well, the advertisers are corporations and so anything that is goes against their agenda whether it's the agenda we know about or the agenda they don't talk about, anything going against the agenda is now demonetized. You're not allowed to make money off of it. It's a way of choking people who go against the corporate agenda. So you have get um, people like Graveyard Girl, 
who is firmly plugged into that agenda. She is constantly buying stuff, showing it to people, showing them how much fun it is to live a consumer lifestyle, thriving apparently on, cons on, on corporate America's food and drink. She's not, but she's going to have to get a lot sicker, like in 10 years or so, to really realize that Sippy Sippy is doing her a lot of harm. And no one will listen to her then because they will delegitimize her with insults and rumors and gossip and trolling. And they will just, they're, they're, they will, and, and the fact that she's ill, she won't be pretty pretty anymore. And so she will lose all of the shallow people who are currently following her. And, and the rest of them are the minority. And you don't really have to worry about them all that much. And you could delegitimize the whole crew and just ignore them. So anyways, I've demonetized my videos because I thought, well, you know, why should anyone make money off of any of my stuff if I'm not making some? If you want to run ads and make money, then you got to send me a cut. Now, that's not to say that I think there will be no ads. There might have been an ad in front of this video. I do think that they will still run ads. But they don't run as many ads. And I recognize that to some degree I've got to pay for the hosting of this video on the YouTube. And that running ads is the way, you know, viewing ads, having ad advertising thrown at you is the way. But I want you folks to watch your movies, your TV Actually, it's going to ruin entertainment for you. I'm finding it so difficult to find anything that's actually entertaining. This one's all about convincing people that if they party, their world will get better. That, and and these, are, these are shows I'm watching marketed to kids. That one's all about how, yeah, everybody ruined the earth. But in fact, it was our technology that saved it in the end anyway, you see, because the next species that came along sought out our help, even though we were long gone. It, it's it's the weirdest new thing in the ne Finding Nemo world. It's... What? Happy Feet. How did they solve the problem? By dancing. I know. You have to have a lot of song and dance in a musical number. And everybody knows kids require song and dance to stay interested. Do, do they really? Or do they just require a lot less BS? Hmm. Interesting question. I'm not a parent. I don't get to answer it. <laughs> but that's the whole thing. Um, by dividing us along every line possible, using our movies and television to convince us that it's a scary world and we've got to stick to the corporate agenda, and the corporate agenda is keep your face in your phone, consider Facebook your best buddy, and stay in your house or at work, don't talk to anybody, don't organize, don't cooperate, don't listen to that one over there that's being seditious. Just get your work done. You're going to be too sick and tired at the end of the day to bother with all of this oil pipelines and dying salmon and, 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 and brown trees, and brown evergreens and, and forest fires and hurricanes and tornadoes and man those things make great theater you really flock to the screens for that so we we're happy about it of course you're not but as as long as we can keep you on that balance of shocked and aghast without you actually tumbling into do something we're happy so as soon as we reach that point where you start talking to your neighbor about what should we do we change the channel we offer you a big pumpkin barfing out of its mouth. We offer you a crisis in another place. We love it when the crises come so thick and fast you can't respond to it. That's what corporate America, corporate, I mean, they're, it's funny, you know, the, the alt-right are talking globalists, globalists. I know this because I'm married to one. They're constantly talking about globalists, and I still think of it as corporate America, but in point of fact, America's just the biggest victim right now. Well, biggest victim. One of its victims. I don't know who the biggest is. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what communist China does with all of this. Look at that. I'm knitting again. As if I know what I'm doing. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm making a blanket for my dog because the last blanket 
I did not realize when I bought him alpaca that it was an alpaca blend. It was only 20% alpaca, 80% acrylic, which has caused it to become crispy over time. I'd much rather a hole wore in it, and I had to darn the hole, than to have it just turn into a crispy piece of crap that I have to replace. So I, I'll give it a wash and donate it somewhere, and somebody can decide if it's a baby blanket or a pet blanket or a tablecloth. I, I don't care. I'm going to replace his blankets with pure wool. And it turns out my dog is not allergic to wool, even though everyone says crested are. Maybe that's because I don't feed him any glyphosate-ridden foods. I'm not sure. Man, I'd love to. That's one of those things corporate the cor that the corporate culture is trying to hide from you. That's one of the things on the agenda that you don't notice when they're spraying poison in the, on the planet. And you can call it chemtrails if you want to. But uh, contrails, they're air pollution, but they're not some nasty special plot. I really, really promise you they're not. They're just a way of making even more money off of you. And that's the part that's so bloody goofy, that the goal is to look richer than your neighbor. I looked into this one time. I thought, well, what are, what are these profiteers getting out of it? What exactly are they getting? How do we figure out what they need so that we can arrange it for them in such a way that they don't have to kill us all to do it? And as it turned out, an endless game of one-upmanship with their peers is what they're after. They used to, you used to hear about, um, you know, explorers that were constantly one-upping their buddies, like, oh, well, you climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with the lions, well, I climbed Mount Everest, Mount Everest with yetis, you know, they... I got around the world in 180 days. Oh, well, I'm going to sail around it in 175. Oops, he died. <laughs> and they, they were putting their lives on the risk for bragging rights. And now they're, doing, they're putting our lives on the risk for their bragging rights. Now, instead of, instead of their exploits, they're making their brags off of their income. You know, last quarter, we cleared blah, blah billion Who's on Forbes is most wealthy? Instead of the who's who at the of culture, it's the who's who of finance. These are people that need ego strokes really severely, and they've been caught in an upward spiral of a game that has no good end. And they've been doing it generationally. They've been raising their kids to do it. They've been doing it for, I don't know, since the industrial age for sure. That's when it got big. I mean, there, there was, I don't know, maybe they'll kill each other all off? <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've been still trying to figure out, you know, how many people are involved in this scam of climb higher than your neighbor, this game, and how do we keep that, how do we occupy that need so they stop doing it this way. You have to plan your system around the greedy. That's the trouble with idealism, is it thinks that the greedy people are going to change, and they're, they're not going to change. They have their needs, and if their needs are not met, they will do what it takes to meet their needs, just like everybody else. So you've got to figure out how to meet their needs. What are their needs? Why are their needs? And how do we fix it? Still working on that one. But when you're watching your media... I want you to remember this. Your media is your culture. It's teaching your children who they are, how to behave, what to wear, what to eat, and how to interact. See you later.